All right. So in this set of videos, in this section, which is section eight, um, what we're going to be doing is similar to what we did before in the sense that we had to find the total force, the resultant, and we had to find the total moment, or sort of a resultant moment, moment I guess you might say. Um, but what we're going to do now is we want to basically combine those two things, okay? Because we can say we've got a total amount of force and a total moment, or we can say we've got a total amount of force in a particular direction, or well, not direction, in a particular location. So we can specify a line of action, okay? So when we want to describe everything that could be happening to our system, we can specify total force, total moment, or total force, line of action. Both of those are going to give us the same result, all right? So in this particular case, number 31, We've got a beam and there's three forces acting on it. And I've already broken it down into what those forces are and what those, um, uh, what the resultant of that is going to be. And so let's go ahead and figure out the moment for each force. And, um, okay, let's see if I can switch my screen a little bit there. Well, that's not very helpful. Okay, we're going to have to adapt. All right, so if I want to have the moment for these guys, um, so M1, all right, is acting out there at a distance of three, it's going to produce a negative moment. So I've got minus three acting with my 500. Okay, and so that gets me minus 1500. Just like that. And we'll do that with the others as well, of course. So M2 minus 6 onto the 250. Okay, and that also is minus 1500. And then finally M3, which is out there a distance of 9 feet. And so it's going to give considerably more moment than the other two. All right. And so my my resulting moment then is minus 7,500. Okay. So what I want to do now is I want to um, think about our resultant force. Okay. So let me draw it. R, okay, it's straight down, here's R. And basically what we want to try to do is, is imagine a case where we don't have any of these forces acting and all we have acting is R, okay? So we know that R is going to be some location from the origin like this, maybe we'll call that D. And we want really, our goal is to figure out where to put R. So what value of D will give us the same moment that we had um, with all of the forces in there, okay? And so we're gonna do something like this. Make it a little bit bigger here. So when I say we want M R to be D, onto R, and it's going to be negative, given the direction of Ds and R. And so that's got to work out to be 7,500. And so our D then will be the, um, the negative signs cancel, of course. So we get 7,500 divided by 1250, which is 6 feet. Okay, now, so I, I just sort of randomly put that R, that red R vector on there, and it looks like I just happened to kind of get it in the right spot there, okay? But um, other times, I mean, I'm, that was just a guess. I don't really know, of course, but um, 
uh, it might have turned out to be like 6.1, 5.9, something like that. We don't really know for sure until we do the algebra and run the numbers. But um, in this case, right there on 6. Okay, so we'll, we're going to look at a couple more examples like this. The next one um, has some angles in the vectors. And so I'm going to show you how we treat with that. And then the last one I look at will involve um, uh, more, more complicated calculations, but still the same basic idea.